Hey, what's up, folks? This is uh, another video coming at you from my channel, I Am Toys. Uh, this is Chris, as usual. So, as usual, as well, make sure you hit that 4K option on your browser so you get this video in its full resolution. Um, again, this is another custom figure. Those of you who are Michael Myers and Halloween fans already know what this is. This is uh, the Ghost Myers, and this is made by uh, Michael Cortez. Uh, well known, pretty well known in the hobby too as well. If you're in one six scale horror stuff too as well, if you traffic in the groups, then you probably know who he is. Um, if you don't, well that's his name, and he's the one who made the figure. <laughs> and uh, like I said too, I think I already said it already. Hit that 4K option on your browser. Um, if I didn't, if I'm repeating myself, then oh well. Uh, but do that before you watch this video in fucking 480p, and you're like, oh my god, this video looks like shit. <laughs> so make sure you do that now. Uh, but anyway, this is from the scene where he kills Linda. You know, he throws her on the sheet and he kills her. Um, you know, with the, I think it was with the phone, uh, phone line, or the phone wire, the cord, rather. And uh, one of the interesting things about that scene was that she really, and I've talked about, talked about this with Mike as well, and as well as with other collectors, that she had no idea who, she essentially died not knowing who killed her. Um, I'll, I'll do, you know, under all rights, she assumed essentially that it was her boyfriend who killed her and she probably died thinking that or at least well, what the fuck is going on <laughs> at the very least right and um, that's a whether Deborah Hill or Carpenter planned on that you know who knows uh, if it just kind of worked out that way or is that something that um, they wanted horror fans to kind of pick up on their own because a lot of people probably didn't pick up on that and there are those that did as well and another interesting thing that has always come up is this 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 kind of almost I consider it a myth, um, this, this legend that um, Michael Myers is somehow emotionless, um, and that's been fed to as well by the film and you know and Donald Pleasance, um, you know Dr. Loomis essentially saying that oh he's d dark soul and evil and um, there's no emotion there and I, I can't even honestly remember and, and I'm sure he's probably said it but um, I don't know if necessarily Dr. Loomis has ever said that he was emotionless. Um, I know he's always said that he's evil and, and there's nothing there essentially so I guess maybe theoretically based on that you can say he's emotionless but this conversation comes up quite frequently and it, it always comes up too as well when I post um, a picture of you know that sculpt that I have from Rob Castro where half of the mask is torn off and, and you see the emotion face and he's got his mouth open kind of gritting his teeth a little bit mouth open like uh, not necessarily gritting his teeth but teeth are showing and you see emotion in his face, and people are often like, you know, well, you know, it's a cool concept piece, but you know, not necessarily, you know, he wouldn't react like that. So that theory is kind of defeated in the first film, um, almost right off the bat, was probably within the first 30 minutes. And one of those scenes, and I've talked about this with Mike too as well, and other collectors and horror fans, is you know when they're walking down the street, and her one, and Lori and her friends, Linda and everybody are walking down, walking home or whatever, or if it was to school, I can't remember. I think it was after. I think they were walking home from school, and um, Michael is in the station, the you know the station wagon, and he's driving, and uh, Lori's one friend ends up yelling at him, and he slams on the brakes. And um, generally, if you're slamming on the brakes like that, you've either gotten angry, <laughs> um, or you were startled by something. And guess what? All of that entails some kind of emotion. Um, there is also the theory, well, okay, well, maybe he was just fucking with them. Um, and he wanted to, to kind of toy with them. But guess what? To be able to do that as well, you have to be calculative and find some kind of enjoyment or reasoning for doing that. And so what I'm getting at, and again, a lot of people are going to try and debate me on this, but you're going to end up losing. Um, because I, I practice in, in medicine and I practice specifically in psychiatry. So for these things to kind of happen, that in itself right there is telling you that there is some emotion there. Um, even when he goes to kill people, and I know I'm getting off on a little bit of a tangent here, but I just wanted to kind of bring this up. And those of you who are horror fans and, and you know, figure collectors are going to like hearing this anyway. Anyone, some of you folks who just want to see the figure are probably bitching at me. So just fast forward if you don't want to hear this shit. Um, but anyway, and, and even when he... he he is uh, going after people and, and he's uh, in predator mode and, and um, trying to kill folks. His breathing changes even. And, and with, with those breathing changes, it, it, it's, it's not robotic. You can hear the, uh, the fatigue and, and the emotion coming out of him even when he's doing that. Even in, the, in scenes where he's hurt, 
um, you hear the reaction to him, a pain reaction. And guess what? There is emotion in that too as well. You have to be feeling something emotion-wise to be able to feel pain and for your breathing to change like that or to moan or, or grunt or whatever the hell it is. And he's done it in all, all the films and he's also done it in the most recent film too as well when he got his fingers shot off. You hear it. So this idea that Myers is emotionless um, is not true. At least I don't think it's true. And there are quite a few people out there um, as well uh, who really, if you're looking into it the way I am, um, have some knowledge base into it. Uh, he is, there is emotion there, trust me. And uh, again, maybe this was something that uh, the writers and directors maybe did not fully understand or maybe they were just playing with people um, too as well. You know, because like I said, it's not like they probably consulted um, anyone, a psychiatrist or a, a psychologist or anyone during the film saying, hey, well, if this guy's emotionless, you know, there are certain things that he's probably not going to do as, as when he's stalking someone or when he's reacting. So maybe he was supposed to be emotionless. But like I said, the things that have kind of transpired in the films, um, you know, he... Uh, that there is emotion there in various aspects. So, now that I've gone on that full tangent, and you guys are probably like, shut up, man. Um, we're gonna get into the figure. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'll show you. I'm not gonna do a bunch of poses with this guy because uh, trying to get everything to lay right over and over again as far as this and drape where it needs to is a pain in the ass. Uh, but Mike did a great job on this, man, uh, from the base to the, uh, the body that, that he gave me, the female body, uh, under the sheet there. And um, it's really gonna be, um, it's gonna be a fun review. So let's get into it and I'll give you some close-up shots of this and then I'll throw them on the uh, turnstile and I'll have them rotate around too as well. It's a little surprise on the back. And I'll show you maybe a couple other things and that shall be it. All right, so here's a closer look at this guy. And as you can see, very, very good job on this thing, man. The glasses are accurate to the ones in the film. You got the slots, the slits in the face or behind the eyes too as well. You can see the eyeballs. It's a very, very nice touch. Um, I like that he did that too as well. Um, and uh, it's not hard to get this um, draped to where it needs to be. You know, you can fuss around with it, do what you got to do, fold some things here and there, and you get everything to sit pretty much where you want to. Uh, he, Mike did a, like I said, did a good job. Uh, the material chosen under the clothes, or not clothes, but under the sheet per se, um, is like a nylon material. It's not necessarily like the material that, that, that the, the coveralls would normally be made out of. And I'm half thinking that they, that may be due to the possibility of dye um, rubbing off onto the sheet and changing the color of it. So I think that may be a particular reason why that was, uh, that may be the reason why he chose to use that. Um, at least that's what I'm thinking anyway. Or who knows, maybe it was a little bit cheaper to use that instead. Um, because getting another pair of yunsels and putting it under here just to cover it up uh, is kind of a waste <laughs> if you're only gonna see that portion. Uh, but I think possibly it might be also due to the dye, you know, the chance of dye rubbing off uh, too as well. Uh, the knife, some of you are wondering what knife, is, what knife that might be, and that's the Fergo. Uh, probably the best, one of the best um, custom knives out there as, as far as making, as far as the, the lamps, and uh, it's really, really accurate. And um, like I said, the sheet is uh, conditioned very, very well. Uh, Hot Toys seems to not be able to get capes or draping right at all, uh, but Mike <laughs> was able to condition this very well. And again, I know it's not a, an equivalent comparison what I'm talking about, but I'm just trying to make a crack there. Because I know the purists out there are going to be like, no, this is really what happens. Uh, it's like just, uh, it's okay, guys. Don't, don't take it personally. Um, but anyway, so, you know, to get this thing to drape right, it drapes perfectly. Um, there's some tutorials out there, too, as well, if you ever wanted to try to make this yourself as well. Uh, this was very reasonably priced for what you get. Uh, I love that he added this body here. And it's actually a female body. He was like, do you want a male or a female? I was like, I'll definitely do fail. female in the spirit of the fact that uh, he killed Linda, essentially. So uh, I definitely wanted that. Very, very cool base. Nice touch, all wood. Excellent job, man. Like I said, for what you get, 
all this stuff, man, is uh, very reasonably priced. At least I thought anyway. And so this is kind of the front look of it. I'm going to throw them on the base and get them spinning around for you too. And I'll give you a little closer look at the, the base, the floor essentially that he's on. And, um, and then we'll close out, guys. But like I said, the presence of this guy, it's not like you really got to do a lot of stuff with him dynamic-wise. And he's probably going to stay in this pose for me, at least for a while. And um, like I said, it's not like you're going to be doing Spider-Man poses with this guy. So there's really no need to show you guys a bunch of different poses. And uh, it's just a real royal pain in the ass anyway for me. Because I don't feel like having to readjust the sheet over and over again. It would probably take me an hour or longer um, just to mess around added at least added to the review to do all that and um, I'm sorry about that out of focus there but uh, I don't want to do that like I said it would just add unnecessary time to this just want to give you guys a look the overall quality of it and um, like I said it's got one job to do uh, when it comes to figures whether they're custom or from a, a major party manufacturer and does it look like does it recreate that scene? Does it look like the character? Does it look like that scene? Does it look like the person, the personification? Yes, 100%. So, job completed, 100%. Mission accomplished, right? All right, so let me get him spinning around for you just to give you that dynamic. And I'll give you some more close-up shots of the base and the body. And that will be it, folks. See you on the other side. All right, fellas, this is... Uh Got them up on the uh, table and letting them turn around for you guys so you get a little bit more of the dynamic of him spinning. And as you see him go around, Mike also included something else, uh, the little Myers ghost brooch. And you'll get a shot of that as it turns right there. He included that as well. I, th I just thought that was a light, nice little touch too. <laughs> um, yeah, Mike really went out of, goes out of his way when he, when he makes these for you. Um, not, and, and not just with the, the, the figure itself, but... Um, he, he also, and he doesn't have to do this, but he, he takes this figure, my man lives in uh, California, and he actually takes this figure to the Myers house, um, to the original Myers house where everything happens, and he actually takes some pictures with your figure right there, like at, at the place on the porch, and um, he doesn't need to do that, and he goes out of his way and he drives out there and he, he takes these figures out. Um, he takes some pictures, he even sends them to you and says, hey man, this is your, uh, this is your ghost. And it's uh, literally on the steps at the Myers house. And he sends them to you after that. So I have a whole bunch of them. Um, I've shared them in some of the groups already. And uh, so they're there if you want to take a look at them. And uh, like I said, he's a real good guy. Um, you know, people don't have to do that. And the fact that he goes out of his way to kind of do that for folks, you know, um, at least it means a lot to me anyway. Uh, some folks might not give a shit, but I thought it was uh, really nice of the guy to be able to do that. So, while I was talking, hopefully you guys were kind of soaking that up. Um, not really much to say, man. It, it's just really good job, and, and he, the sheet is conditioned very, very well. Very, very well. It drapes exactly how it should. It's not too bulky. Um, it doesn't sit in wrong places. It's really easy to stylize and, and, and futz with. Um, you're not going to have a problem with it at all. He really did a great job, you know, as far as building this and putting it together. So, like I got to say, am I, am I happy? Yeah, 100%. 100%. So, what I'll do next, I'm going to show you the, um, the base a little bit. He also hooks you up, puts a body under that too as well, female body. And uh, he asked me if that's what I wanted too. So, if you were, if anybody else that's looking to get one, um, you want something different, you know, just feel free to ask him, message him, and he'll, um, you know, he'll, he'll work with you and add, adjust, change, do whatever you want. So let me show you that base, and then we'll come back to the ghost one more time and just close out with some thoughts, which I've pretty much already expressed, so there probably won't be much to say. <laughs> but uh, like I said, I'll, we'll, we'll close it out as usual anyway. And here's a closer shot of the base really looks like an actual body um, you even then the sheet is thin enough thin enough that you even see some of the color of the body coming through underneath you got the breasts everything man the leg i love the how the leg the leg bend on, on the side it's awesome man just totally awesome love that he, he, he was able to do this and add this and um it didn't 
Technically, this set doesn't come with the, uh, the tombstone, but this is something that's actually coming with another figure uh, that I'm picking up from him. Uh, it's another Myers figure, and I'll talk about that when I, when I close out. But uh, uh, this is made by, ah, um, oh, man, I forget the gentleman's name. But uh, a terrific job, though. A terrific job. Uh, I want to say his name is Andy. I can't remember. I might be, I might be completely wrong. But very good job on the, ba on, on the, on the base, uh, on the tombstone. Really, really d dig it. Um, good detail. And it's not cardboard. <laughs> Some people out there will know that reference and probably start cracking up. Um, but alright guys, so that's the body. Um, and this, let's throw, throw the ghost back up on the base and close it out. So let's close out the video. So overall, I'm very happy. Um, this figure accomplishes its job. Mike did a great job at putting together, um, getting the sheet uh, conditioned right. And so it, it drapes very, very nicely. Like I said, it's not too bulky. It, it sits, um, it, it recreates the scene perfectly, you know, but bottom line, in a nutshell, um, it does its job. Um, you also get a COA too with it, um, I, I didn't show that here, but you do get a COA, and you get a nice uh, little extra pick too as well, um, of uh, the Ghost Myers, it kind of recreated with the phone scene, where, where he has the phone cord uh, gripped in the right hand, and then the phone's in the left hand, which is a nice touch. Um, so overall, like I said, man, um, two thumbs up on this. I, I, I think it's a, a great little set to have. And uh, it's been good, good times all around for Halloween fans. Um, you know, this uh, probably over the last few days. Um, I'm not really going to be talking about the figure anymore from this point out. Um, but those of you who still kind of want to want to see it and, you know, soak that up a little bit more, feel free to. But those of you who want to check out, feel free to check out. <laughs> But anyway, um, we got two new Halloween films coming, apparently, back-to-back. -back. Originally, we had that rumor um, uh, about, uh, what was it, two movies, uh, supposedly within one month. Uh, man, that, that would have been incredible. But, uh, of course, it was too good to be true. So we're getting one next year. We're getting one after that. Uh, Halloween Kills and then Halloween Ends, I, I believe, were the titles. And then so everyone was thinking, oh, the franchise is going to be over uh, with Halloween Ends. But then... Uh, Danny McBride or somebody came out and said, uh, no, no, there'll be more Michael Myers films. <laughs> so uh, it looks like it's not going to really end, uh, to tell you the truth. So there's all kinds of theories, you know, going, going around whether we're going to have a, a clean mask this time around, um, a newer mask, or maybe he would, I, I would love to see him go maskless. Um, I know some people are going to be like, no, he's got to have a mask. Um, but for the final film or for Halloween Ends, I, I think if you did it right, you could do half the film, or at least um, maybe a quarter of it, with, with no mask on, and you know, really see Jude in the uh, in the character. I, I think it would be great. Um, and if, like I said, if it was done right, I think it would be excellent. So anyway, that's really about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the review, enjoyed my uh, my ranting and raving about certain things, <laughs> and talking uh, talking horror. I love this stuff. I eat, sleep, and breathe horror. Like I said, it's always been my favorite genre um, out of everything. I mean, I love my superhero stuff too as well. I, I love my sci-fi genre as well and some other things, action, you name it. I'm just a big movie guy in general, but horror is horror is my bread and butter, man. And oh, the other thing that I'll be getting from Mike soon too as well is another Myers figure. So there's this guy, Matt. I forget his last name, but he did a scan of another sculpt. Um, or an, another image um, of the Myers sculpt, or mask per se, and did about like 20 of them, I think. I think he only did like 20 or 30, and the sculpt is fantastic, though. And, and if you have it painted right, it, it, it would rival the, the Mad Bug, or even be on the same level, to tell you the truth. And the one that I'm getting is actually with, with, um, with if you guys saw my last video, I, I, I'm, I sent out uh, the two Beto Nightmare on Elm Street 2 heads uh, to Nathan Eakins. Uh, today, so he'll be getting those, and he's going to be repainting them for me, as well as the hands. And he also has a that that Michael Myers sculpt that I was just mentioning from Matt. And those of you who know what I'm talking about know that sculpt is awesome. And that sculpt is being painted by Nathan, and is being haired by him too as well. And I think it's going to be finished next month. So in August, I'm going to have another Myers figure to add to my never-ending Myers figures. <laughs> 
Uh, but that sculpt is amazing though, and, and to be painted by Nathan, uh, I can't imagine it, how, how crazy it's going to look. It's going to look crazy good. Um, really, really, uh, I'm really excited for that. And um, it's going to be on a, on a banner body, I believe, you know, the traditional body with some yuntzels, um, you know, this traditional kind of look. Uh, knife too as well, if I remember correctly. And um, actually, I think Mike is holding one for me anyway. There was a knife that he had kind of approached me about uh, that he, he had ordered a bunch, and I think he's going to have one left. So I think I'm going to grab that one. I'll probably use that for that set. So anyway, guys, those of you who love horror probably enjoyed this review. And those of you who are just kind of bleh were probably like, you barely talked about the figure, man. <laughs> but uh, there's really not much to talk about. Like I said, everything uh, is where it needs to be. So um, Mike did this justice, man. The set is awesome. And as, as you look at it, um, as I sit here and look at it, it is exactly what it needs to be. It is fantastic. So here's the mic. Thank you, man. Thank you for going to the Myers house. Thank you for taking pics and sending them to me, man. You really went out of your way. I really appreciate that. Dude's a good guy, man. All right, folks. Deuces.